Well, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our summer learning series. Today, we're going to talk about events and programming and all that fun stuff. We have Beth with us, who's going to walk through all of that today. Just as a reminder, we will upload this particular webinar onto our YouTube channel to get there sometime next week. Uh, you can view all our summer learning series webinars there on our YouTube channel. Um, during the webinar today, this is a webinar format, so you won't be able to, to talk, but you can ask questions in the Q&A section of your Zoom. Uh, I'll be over there. This is Doug. I'll be over there answering Q&A questions uh, during the Zoom as we go along. That also allows us to download them after the webinar in case we don't get to your question. We can reach out to you directly uh, with a solution. So with that, um, I don't want to take any more of your time. Excited to hear all about events and programming today. Beth, I'm going to turn it over to you. All right, perfect. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. All right. So what are events in Core Reserve? Events are any of your classes, camps, clinics, open plays, anything that you want groups of people to register for and sign up for individually, okay? The first thing you want to set up in Core Reserve regarding events is your event categories. Those event categories are going to be under settings, event settings, event categories. So we're going to click on that. Event categories will be used to categorize the different types of events at your organizations. Some of examples of event categories are adult clinics, junior clinics, socials, etc. It's best to start with your event categories first before setting up any new events here because you will have to select an event category on every single event that you create. All right. Um, it's also really good to get down to the gritty with your event categories so that it breaks down your reporting as good as possible, okay? Um, I'll go back and the next thing we'll go over is your event defaults. We advise you to set these up because when you go to create a new event, these settings will already be set for you by default, which makes setting up events an easier process for you. And we'll go over these settings here in just a little bit, right? The next thing would be your event sessions. Sessions in Court Reserve are really a way for your club to determine how well a specific event, class, or clinic did over the years in Court Reserve. So the most common use of sessions in Court Reserve is for the different seasons and years. So fall, spring, summer, winter, 2022. Okay, so sessions and event categories are useful for your event reporting because you can filter by these sessions and categories. Okay, how do you get to that report? Well, you can go to reports, events, and we'll just take a look at the event summary here. Okay, so you can see if we create event sessions and categories, we can filter on this event summary report by session and by category to see how well an event did during those parameters that you set here, okay? Next thing I'll go over is how you actually set up an event and all of the settings that are included. So the easiest way I personally think to search an event would be in this search box, box at the top hand corner here. So you can search the ID number or the name of the event. So we're just gonna type in a name of the event here. Ladies 3.0 Clinic, this is an event that I already created, but when you create a new event by selecting create event under this dropdown, this is what you're going to have to set up. All right, so I'm just going to go through these settings here. This would be, if you were creating a new event, this is the things that you would have to input. So here you would put the name of the event, and this is what your members will see when they are signing up for the event, okay? This is that event category that the system will force you to input, okay? Um, if you want to select a session for the event, you can do so here, but it is not required that you input a session. Max registrant is the max amount of players you want to be able to sign up for the event, okay? So this would mean eight people max can sign up, right? Date times, there's a couple different settings here. Override hours of operations is a newer feature, and this allows you to create an event that is happening outside of your normal operating hours. 
So if your hours of operation are from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and you wanted to have an event from 9 p.m. to midnight, well, you can do that only on events right now by selecting this option here, and then you can change your times to be outside of your operating hours, okay? Event date is gonna be where you put the start date of the event. So when is this event starting? And then you would put the start and end time of the event. So this event is gonna start on July 20th, and at the time of the event is going to be from 11.30 to 1.30, okay? If you want a reoccurrence, this is going to be set if you want this event to repeat more than once. So the options for that are daily, weekly, monthly, or custom. And if you just have a one-time event that's happening one time and that's it, then you just click none. You do not have to use a reoccurrence, okay? Um, daily, you could set every one day or every weekday. Um, weekly is what I had set up, so I'm going to be using that one. I'll go back to that in just a second. You can do monthly as well, so reoccur every one month with the day and then the first of the month or whatever that may be. And then custom is really cool because you can just go in here and select random dates that this event is happening on. Okay, so really cool there. Um, I'm going to go back to weekly just because that's how I had this set up. Okay, once you set up your reoccurrence, the reoccurrence rules box is going to populate. Okay, this is how often the event is going to reoccur, right? So we're gonna have this reoccurring every single week, right? If you want this event to happen every week for 10 weeks, you wouldn't put 10 here, right? Because <laughs> then the event's not gonna reoccur until every 10 weeks. So we need to set this to one so that the reoccurrence happens every week on Wednesdays for the next 10 dates, okay? So you have in after X amount of dates. So we want this to repeat for 10 dates, or we have the ability to just end it on a specific date. So if we know when that date is, we can just set that here, okay? Then you're gonna see exception dates. And this is really if you want to bypass or skip over a date that is happening in this reoccurrence. So we, sh we could say, well, we don't want this event to happen on 824 and the system is just going to skip over that date and this event will not happen on that day, okay? Uh, now we get into allow registrants to register for single dates, which is meaning that you are allowing members to sign up for this event one day at a time. And this is mostly known as drop-ins. So if you only want them to register one at a time for these 10 dates, then single dates would be the way to go, okay? You're also gonna see allow registrants to register for all dates. This is meaning you're allowing members to sign up for all 10 dates at one time. So it would be considered the full event, okay? So you have the option to do both. So you can allow registrants to choose whether they wanna just sign up for a drop-in, or if they want to sign up for all 10 dates at once, or you can do one or the other. So if you want to only allow single dates, then you would just uncheck this. If you only want members to register for the entire event, then you would uncheck both. Okay, so that's only going to allow them to register for the full event. Okay, moving on to wait lists on events. So there's two different ways you can do wait lists with events. If we uncheck auto register for just a second, we'll see this allow wait list button, okay? So what this means is anyone who cancels their registration from the event, all members that are on the wait list will get a notification stating there is an open spot. And at that point, it is first come first serve to whoever can get that open spot on the event, okay? Auto register from wait list is the other option. And what this means is the first person on the wait list will be automatically registered to the event when a member cancels their registration and they will get an automated email. Auto registration, you'll see this here, only works for single date registrants. So it doesn't work for the full event. So it only works for drop-ins, all right? Um, Prevent auto registration X hours before event. If you are using auto register from waitlist, the system will force you to put a number in here. 
The most common is one hour, but you can essentially put whatever you want here. What this means is that if my event starts at noon today and I have people on the wait list and I have somebody withdraw from the event at 1130, then auto registration from wait list is not going to happen, right? Because it's so last minute. So this is really a way, um, you know, for people that are on the wait list to, it would refer back to the old way. Right. So if it's within that one hour time frame before the event and someone cancels their registration, everybody on the wait list would still get an email and then it would be first come first serve. But auto registration wouldn't happen because it would be so close to when the event starts. OK, um, we also have this new it's a newer feature here. Allow family members to be individually registered. Checking this box will allow one family member on the wait list to be registered individually without skipping over the entire family on the wait list and waiting for more slots to open for all family members. So an example of this would be if me and my mom registered for the wait list at the same time, the only way that we could be entered into the event if this was not checked is if two people from the wait list canceled at the same time. So if this was, then this means that it would, the auto registration process from the wait list would happen normally, right? So it would be, you know, I would register if someone cancels. And then if another person cancels, then my mom would be registered. So that's kind of how that works. Okay. Moving on to event instructors. If you have an instructor that is teaching an event or clinic, you can assign them as the instructor here. <clears throat> and that will mark their schedule. So they won't be able to be scheduled for any lessons or other clinics or events that you're um, having during this time because they're already going to be scheduled and it's going to block their schedule. OK, you also have the ability to display the instructor on the member portal, and that would list the name of the instructor on the event side on the member side as well. OK. Court types and courts, this is where you assign the courts that the event is going to be taking place on. So you can choose multiple court types. And then a really cool feature here, rather than going one by one and selecting all your different courts, you actually see this select all button in which you can select all the courts and then just delete the ones that you won't need. And if there's any conflicts with courts, you can see that here as well. All right, so I'm going to take those off. All right, um, if you want to insert a ball machine on the event, um, you can use that here and select it. Prevent member from withdrawing from event within X amount of hours. This is stating if the event is happening within six hours, then I am not as a member going to be able to withdraw my registration. I would have to either, I would have to call a staff member so they could cancel or withdraw me from the event, okay? Uh, this note section here, here is uh, a note that will show on this schedule for admins and members. Um, you don't have to use this, but if you do want to use this and you want it to show up, you will need to go to your portal settings setup. And there is a setting that uh, a checkbox that says show reservation event notes on all schedulers. So if you want your notes to, to show up, you'll need to go to that to, set, to uh, um, allow that to show. All right. Event registrants, custom fields. So custom fields in general are great resources to gather and record additional information from your members, okay? And you'll actually have to set up these custom fields in another area as well under settings, okay? Um, an example of a custom field here on an event would be t-shirt size. So when a member goes to register for this specific event, they will have to fill out this field, you know, what their t-shirt size is, and their response will show up on the admin side. So th the, then you will know what t-shirt sizes to order and give out to your members that are coming, okay? I um, mean, I'll show you where you can view the custom field answers a little bit later, okay? Moving on to event setup. So you'll see this is in section and sections and the rows are broken up by membership type. So you can set different pricing for the event and restrictions based on the membership type a member holds, okay? 
drop-in price is going to be the price for a single date of the occurrence, right? So we can say the drop-in for one single date is $5, okay? Full price means this is going to be the total price for all of the dates of the reoccurring event. So all 10 dates, this is going to be $50 for all the membership types. And you can change the rates based on membership types as you, if you choose to do so. I'm just gonna leave mine all the same, okay? Is public. This means that the event is going to be visible for this membership type. Allow online registrations means that the member can actually register for this event. So a lot of support tickets we've seen in the past, you know, a club will have is public turned on and they're like, why can't my member register for this event? I have it public. Well, allow online registrations also needs to be checked if you want them to register, okay? Hide pricing. So this is an option if you want to hide the pricing for the event, but this is only going to be an option for free events. Obviously, because people want to know what they are paying for if there is a fee, okay? Um, you'll see two options here, require upfront payment and require payment profile. This will only be an option if you are using payments in court reserve with either Safe Safe or Stripe. The first one, require upfront payment, is meaning that when a member signs up for this event, they will have 15 minutes to pay the fee for the event, or they will be automatically withdrawn from the event, okay? Require payment profile means that the member will be required to have a payment profile on their account. If the member does not have a payment profile on their account, there will be a pop-up message that will lead them directly to add their payment profile, okay? Requires approval is a way for admins if they want to um, you know, approve or decline members' registration to the event rather than them just auto approving um, if you don't have this check. Okay. You can set specific times for the registration to open for your event. So we have based on event start. So this is X amount of time before the event. We, when do we want the registration to open? So if we wanted the registration to open five hours before the event, we could set that up. Or we have the option to be very specific with our date and time of when we want registration to open, okay? And you can do this for drop-in and full event um, registration as well, okay? A lot of membership types, so let's scroll down. Uh, next setting would be registration ends before event, meaning that the registration would end six hours before the event starts, okay? So nobody else could register. This is a really good way. This is a good thing to set if you don't want last minute, you know, people registering. Okay, show registrants if you want to show the people that have registered for this event to your members. So if you're very, if you're a private club um, and you, you know, don't want names showing, um, then maybe you don't want to use this. So just be careful on using this if you choose to do so. Okay, um, you'll also see two more options down here that I just wanted to go over. X number of dates to turn off registration by full event price. And this means that a member will not be able to register for the full event if there are only two dates left of the event. So for example, we can see that this event is happening 10 times, right? So when there is only two days left, then, well, actually, if we turn to this eight, um, if there's eight, two days, two dates left, if we're on date number eight, right, then people are not going to be able to sign up for the full event. They'll only be able to sign up for the drop-in. Okay, um, you'll also see allow proration on full event price, meaning that it will prorate the full event price automatically. Um, so you don't have to pay the full price for not all of the dates, essentially. So if I signed up for the full event on the fifth date, the system is going to prorate that $50 down, right? So that way I don't pay the 50, the full $50 for all 10 dates when I really didn't go to all 10 dates. I'm only going to go to five. So that's a way to, to prorate on events, okay? Uh, this description tab here is a way for you to leave a quick summary or description about the event. You can leave that here and this content will show up on the member side when your members are registering to the event, okay? Registration restrictions. 
This is a way to restrict members from specific events if they do not fit the criteria that the admin sets here based on gender, based on age, rating category, or allowed member groups. So for example, if I want an only female above 40, uh, you know, tennis three five ladies, right? I can set these restrictions up here and I can even hide the event if a member does not fit these restrictions. Okay, so that will hide it completely for your members if they don't fit in these. Now, one thing to note here, and a lot of people, we've seen a lot of support come in on this, is let's just say, you know, I don't, I'm a member at your organization and I don't have my date of birth inserted, but I'm 50 years old, right? And I'm a 3-5 and I'm female. Well, if I don't have my date of birth inputted in my personal information, I am not eligible to sign up for this event. So just know if you are setting restrictions, make sure that the people that you are wanting to register have this information inputted under their personal information. Because if they do not, then they will not be allowed to register. So it's a good, good thing to point out there. All right. This additional setup tab, this is just some additional settings here, and I'm going to go over them with you. Um, is, fe is featured. Um, really what this does is it'll make an event featured. And it will allow a couple of things. Um, it'll allow members to filter on the portal for only featured events. And if you're using widgets, you can also filter by featured events as well, okay? Allow members to register till event ends. If you want your members to register all the way up until your event ends, so they can register when the event is happening as well, you can select that here, all right? Disclosure. Um, you will have to set this up under settings, disclosures. If you don't have any, you're going to get blank here. So um, if you want members to have to acknowledge and check off on a disclosure, you can add that here. Okay. If you're using revenue, revenue categories and you want to assign a specific category to this event, you can do so here. Um, hide event on event list and calendars. This is going to hide it on the portal side. Okay. Um, if you want to leave some check-in notes, you can do so here. And then lastly, this is a newer feature that I want to go over, uh, who gets notified on a new registration for the event. So these are those automated email notifications that you will receive, okay? So the options here are assigned instructors only, which means only the instructor that was attached to the event will receive any email notifications for this event, okay? Admins only means only full admins, all system users, this would mean everybody that is a system user, admins, sub-admins, and instructors. Or you can select specific system users to receive notifications. So we're gonna select assign instructors only. We're gonna say, okay. Next thing, uh, embed code. So this is um, just going over the public event URL. You can copy this URL and you can send this to your players if you want um, them to be led directly to this specific event and you want them to register for it, okay? So if I copy this URL, you can see if I just open another tab and I copy it here, it's gonna lead me directly to that event that we are going over right now, okay? And I can click on details and I can register for it, all right? One thing that another support question that we get a lot is why is it saying event not found when I copy this URL into another tab? Well, if we go to event setup, we'll see, we scroll down, we're gonna see this membership type, public embed code widgets. If that is not set to be public, then you're gonna get that error message. So make sure that if you are wanting to send that link out, that public link, then make sure that this is checked or it's not gonna work right, okay? Um, and then there's also an embed code if you want to copy this event embed code into another website or whatever that may be. Okay, so that's all the settings on this page. I'm going to move on to the um, dates tab as well and cover a couple of things here. <clears throat> so if we look here, we're going to see a list of all of the dates of this event. Okay, you're going to see the date, the time of the event, what instructor is teaching it what courts this event's happening on, the registrant count, if there's any conflicts happening, 
the status of the event. So is it upcoming? Is it canceled? Is it a past date? Um, you can register members from this page directly into the event. Um, you can assign courts. So if I click on that, we're gonna see the registrants for this date that are signed up. And we can say, well, Jaina, you're going to court one, Dakota, you're going to court two, and Bertie, you're going to court one. And then save that and they'll be assigned that court. So super cool there. Um, you can reschedule the event date. So if you wanna say July 27th, we wanna reschedule this to a different date, we can click on that and just click the new date that we want this date to happen on for this event. We can cancel the date here as well. And if we wanna edit the, just this single date, we can click here, okay? Um, if we click on this plus sign dropdown, we're gonna see the list of registrants. So with the registrant name, um, and then how I mentioned custom field earlier, you can see that custom field here under this I icon and what the member filled out. The email of the member, what membership site they have, when were they registered? You can also assign them the court here as well. So um, you could do it individually here. Uh, the cost of the event, and if they were registered via drop-in or for the full event, you would see that in parentheses here. What they're due, so the money that they are due for the event, and their payment status, you can pay directly from this screen. So let's say Jaina, she comes up to the front desk and we have this event pulled up. We can go in here and press pay and select what her payment type is and press save. So super cool there. Um, let's see, we can check in members from this screen. So if you're using the check-in feature, you can say check-in, late arrival, no shows, and then it'll be good for your attendance reporting as well. You can email specific members. You can cancel members registration. You can also reschedule their registration for this event as well, okay? Um, these tabs here, you'll see registrants. This is gonna be all of the registrants who are inside the event right now with their custom field answer, okay? Waitlist, this is gonna be, if you are allowing a waitlist, um, then you'll see those waitlisted members here with all the information that they filled out, okay? We get a lot of support on this as well. So say, you know, I'm a, I'm a member, I'm an admin, and I want to, um, you know, add a member to the wait list for this event because it's full. Well, a lot of the mistakes that come with going with that is they'll just go and they'll click register members. And even though it's full, you know, the system is going to override that and still put that member in there if you're an admin and you register them. So if you want to add a member to the wait list, then you need to go to the event and go to the waitlist tab and you're gonna see add to waitlist here, okay? And you're only gonna be able to add members to the waitlist when the event is full, obviously, okay? Uh, the cancel tab, any canceled members that have signed up, pending approval, if you're using approvals for your event, you can see that here if there's anybody that's pending. And then all the transactions that were made, and you're, you know, if they're unpaid or paid, okay? Um, if we go back to the registrant screen, we'll see a couple different things we can do here as well. So this notify option, you have the ability to email or text registrants. Only You only see text registrants if you are using the text alert add-on. Okay? If not, then you won't see that. You'll only see email. So you can email members directly from this screen, and it's going to pick all three of these registrants to email. All right? You can run an attendance report. Um, or a registrant detail report. I do wanna go over this registrant detail report with you because this is how you can get a list of all of those custom field answers. So if we just leave all of this set, right? Um, and then we say, you know, member first name and last name, and then we wanna get the t-shirt size because that was that custom field that we inputted on the event, right? If I press run report, I'm gonna get all the answers to those custom fields here on this report. So just wanted to show you how you can do that as well. All right. Um, and then you can also export or print this list as well. Okay. Um, now, regarding the total event, there's some icons here I want to go over with you. You can run an attendance report. This is going to be for the full event. So it's going to show you check-ins, all good stuff like that. If you want to register members for the full event, if we click on that, we're gonna see that it's gonna by default register them to all, but you can change to drop in price here. And then you will need to fill out their custom field answer as well. And then you can search for a member and register for them here. All right, um, we go back, you can add members to the wait list from this screen. You can cancel the event. Be careful when canceling. 
because there is no undo button right now. So if you cancel an event with unpaid by accident, right, which is, I don't know how you would do it by accident, but some people do. If you do cancel, there's no way to undo that. You will have to recreate the event and re-register all those members back into the event. So be careful when you see that red button, okay? Um, add event date, you can add dates as well if you choose to do so, all right? You're gonna see the audit log tab. This is gonna be a list of all the different actions for this specific event. So the action type, you know, edit, cancel, create, the entity type, the action by, so who, who made the action. Um, if that was an admin, it would say A. If it was a member, it would say M. When was the action done on with the time um, for the event? It's all gonna show the name, it's gonna show the name of the event here, uh, the reservation date, and then a, just a description of what was changed, right? Or what was done. Okay, so super cool here. Um, the audit log is really good to look at um, regarding your members. If they say they did something and they didn't, you can always check that to look, okay? Um, this copy feature, you can copy the event. I'm gonna get into a better spot where you can copy events. Um, so I'll come back to that. You can also cancel here as well. And then, you know, view your, it, this will take you directly to the event list, which I'm gonna go over in just a couple minutes, okay? Lastly, on this page, you're gonna see the transactions and this is gonna be just a list of all the fees and payments, statuses and refunds of this event, okay? Now, regarding refunds with events, do want to go over this with you guys because it's important. There's two different types of uh, refunds with events. I would say the first um, is less common. Um, an automated refund would be, you know, if you reschedule a player, um, let's say this event's $5. Let's say this member's already paid and we reschedule this member to a cheaper event, right? It's going to give them a refund. Like, let's say, you know, we, we schedule, we reschedule them to an event that only costs $3 it's going to refund them $2 if they've already paid. Okay. Uh, not super common, but that, that will happen. Okay. The more common scenario um, with refunding on events is when you create a closure or you cancel an event when registrants have already paid for the event and a pending refund is requested. So for example, down here, we have a canceled event. I just wanted to show you guys how this would look. We look here, we see that there's canceled two people, right? Because they were in the event and then I canceled the event. So if we go to canceled, we're gonna see this pending refund tab, okay? So members will not be automatically refunded this. You as an admin will actually have to re autom like manually refund them this $5, okay? How to do that, you would go to transactions and then you would go to refunds here. I'm just gonna open another tab. We go to transactions, refunds. We're gonna see, you know, Bodhi here, um, when he requested it, what the amount was, um, you know, the reason, and then who canceled it. So then we can accept, refuse, or reschedule the refund. Okay, so that's refunds. It's really the only two scenarios you'll really probably get into. Okay, now going to the event list. This is just gonna be a list format of all of your upcoming events with the event ID number the name of the event. If you click on anywhere but the name of the event, you'll see if I go to Ladies 3.0 Clinic, you're gonna, you can scroll down and see all of that information here. So super cool. If you listed a session on the event, you'll see that here, um, what category the event's in, drop-in price versus full event price. You may see something like this and wonder why that's happening. Well, the reason why that's happening, that price range is because you have different prices set on the event for different membership types. Okay, so you may have for the non-member membership, it might be $70, but for the full membership, it might only be $30. So that's that's the case when you'll see that if it's $5, that means everybody's charged the same thing. Okay, uh, here you'll see the date, the time, the registrants, and then if there's a reoccurrence on the event as well. Okay, you'll see some um, options here as well. Filters, so you can filter um, here by, uh, specific criteria that you set. This is where you can even find past and canceled events. So if you wanna find a canceled event, you can go to status here, press canceled and find your canceled events, right? Um, or you can go to date time and here you can filter and look for past dates or past events. 
there's a, a lot of additional information here that you can filter by as well. All right, you can save filters so that way you can use them later as well. You can export your event list and then you can create new events from this page as well. Okay. Now, probably the best thing on this screen um, would be these three dots over here on the right hand corner. We click on that we're gonna see an update feature. So we can, it'll lead us directly to update this event. We can see the dates of the event, the audit log specifically for this event, and then we can cancel this event as well. The copy feature is the best thing here though. <laughs> so if we click on copy, we're gonna see what it does, right? So it literally copies the event that we had for open play, right? So we don't have to recreate this event from scratch. All we have to do now is change our dates. So if you have a similar event that's happening every single month, you can just recopy and change your dates and your times and your settings and then go down here and save. So that way you don't have to recreate it every single time. So super, super cool there with event list and the copy feature. So I definitely recommend using the copy feature rather than adding new dates to the event because that can get a little messy. So copying the events a lot easier. Right, we go to the calendar view. This is just gonna be a display of all of your events, events only, so reservations and lessons won't show up here. This is only your events um, of just a display of your calendar. And you can filter here by day. So you can see it in the day display, um, weekly, monthly, monthly is my favorite. And then you can see it in agenda view as well. All right, you have a filter option, so you can filter by specific categories. So if we only wanna see adult clinic categories or round robin categories, we can do that. We can export this calendar as well to a PDF. Um, we can also edit events from this page. So if we click on summer camp, that's gonna uh, lead us directly to just this event date where we can edit things. Um, one thing I will point out here on this edit screen is this max registrant override. So let's say you have an event that's full, right? But you want to override the registrants for only that one specific date. Well, we can change this, right? We can say 18 members are now allowed, but for next week, we still want it to be only 16. So this is how you would do that. Um, and then if you want to change, you know, court types or add an instructor for one week, you know, you just have to come to this specific date and you don't do it at the overall event level. Or that way, you, if you do it that way, it's going to change it for the entire event. So that way, you just want to change it one time. This is how you would do so. Okay. If you click on the registrant box, you'll see it'll take you to the player's um, screen so you can see who's listed and all of the details here as well. Uh, the best function from this screen, I think, from the calendar view is you can easily go back in time and see all of your past dates. So if we wanna see events that happened in January, we can go back here very easily and just go to January 1st. And we can find events that happened in the past, right? Mm -hmm. So we can go, let's say, um, you know, testing boot camp, right? This happened literally in January. We can go to the audit log from here, or we can go and edit the event and see all the specific settings that we set up, anything that we wanna do. So this is a really good way for you to look back on the past for events as well. Events from the scheduler view. So if we go to the scheduler and we go to expanded, I'm just gonna go back to when our event is, which was next Wednesday, I believe. Yep, this Ladies 3 Clinic. So you'll see this event here, right? You can see it on your scheduler. You'll only see it if you have a court assigned. So you can create events without courts, um, but just note that they won't show up on your scheduler, okay? And if you do assign a court, it's gonna show up on your scheduler just like so, okay? Um, you can see here all the information as well. So the category of the event, what the, the name of the event is, the time, the registrants, and the amount of spots open, and then the note that you listed on the event as well. If you have an instructor on the event, you can see their initials, in the top right hand corner and if you hover over that you will see the name of the instructor and the instructor type as well. Um, if you see a dollar sign or a red bar that means that you have people on this event that have not paid for it yet. So if we click on that we it'll take us directly to that pay screen where we can just pay directly from here. Okay if you are using the check-in feature you will see this triangle with an explanation point 
we can click on that and we can go and check members in here from this screen as well. Okay. Um, and then of course, this little eye icon, you can do multiple things from the screen. You can edit the event, which I kind of showed just on the calendar view a couple minutes ago. You can view all the registrants. You can email players from the scheduler. You can view all the transactions and you can view the audit log and you can cancel a date, okay? Um, so that's it on the scheduler. There is two additional settings that I do wanna point out because they're a little, they're hidden. And I just think it's important to know how to do. So the, the first one's gonna be under portal settings setup. You're gonna see hide event dates more than X days out from appearing on the event list, okay? So normally, I think when you create your trial account, this is gonna be left blank. When this is left blank, this means that it's defaulted to 90 days, okay? So the reason why I'm pointing this out is because you may create events that are happening all the way into next year, right? And you want people to be able to see these events on your event list. And if this is set to, for example, 30 days, your members are not gonna be able to see more than 30 days out what events you've created. So if you want people to see events way out, all of your events that you've created, just make sure you set this to a high number because it's important, all right? So we'll save that. That's the first setting. The second setting I wanted to show you, which is something kind of newer we, we um, implemented, is if you want an alternate name for your events displaying, so right now I have it listed as events and you can see on the member portal as well, it states events. But if I called it something such as a clinic or a program or a camp, whatever that may be, um, you can change that. So if we go to um, settings, organization settings, general, and we scroll all the way down here, we're gonna see alternate name for event. So you can change that name to be whatever you want. Whenever you change it, make sure that you make it in singular form. So if you, you know, type in program, right? That's probably the most common alternate name. Don't put programs because the system's gonna automatically make that uh, plural for you. So just type in program. So that way, if we save, it's going to change events to programs everywhere in the system. So you're going to see create program programs on the member portal. You're going to see programs as well. Okay. So I wanted to allow, let you guys know that you guys are allowed to do that and change the name as well. Okay. The last thing I want to show you guys is going to be events on the member portal. So if we go to the member side of things, um, where do members access events? Where, well, they're going to see this events tab here. Um, or programs, whatever you call it. And they're gonna get this drop down. They can see the list of the events, a calendar view of the events, my events. So any events that they have registered for and then any waitlisted events that they are on. So if we click on the list view, we're gonna see here that we can filter by category, by dates, by days of the week, by the time of day, the event type and the price, okay? We can also sort by you know, featured events, how I showed you earlier, um, newest to oldest, all of these good things, okay? Um, and then for your members, it's gonna be very easy, right, to register. So they're gonna see a list of your events, you know, the, the time and how many dates, the pricing range of the event. And when they go to register, let's say, you know, Bethany wants to register for this open play event, well, she'll just click register. And then here she does have the option to register for the full event or just single dates right, and she can click through her single dates. We click register. If you have families in court reserve, you'll see that um, I do have the ability to register, you know, a family member into this event as well, okay. Um, the calendar view, it kind of looks exactly like the member or the admin side does, which is the calendar view of all your events as well, and then again, my events would be all of your um, registered events, and you can see upcoming and past year as well on the member side, and then my waitlisted events, same thing. So it would just be all of the events that you are waitlisted for. And you can also see this on the app as well. Okay. So Doug, do we have any questions? I mean, that's, I think everything I wanted to go over. So if there's anything you want to add, um, that would be great. So I think we've answered most of the questions in the QA, Beth. Um, okay. I would like to point out two things. One is, especially if you're newer, and your club's not open yet, you can create your events and 
most of the event things you do are individual to that event, but you can use event categories to hide entire categories of events. So if you make a category not public, it will hide every event in that category. Yes. Um, so, so I did want to point that out because we have a lot of newer clubs when they come on, they want to create everything, but they don't want people to see it and they don't want to have to turn on each and every event individually. You can do it by category. That's good. And the, the other thing I wanted to show, if you can go back to any event, Beth, in the notify mm -hmm. section. Let's see. So when you go to notify on a, on a date and you click on email, you can decide if you're going to, on the registered status, you can send to just registered players, waitlisted players, canceled players, or all players. So I did want to, I did want to point that out and say that you can email everybody, even the waitlisted players, if you want to, just make sure you choose that inside the notify. Perfect. And great job, Beth. Uh, if nobody else has any other questions, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we really enjoyed having you. Thank you, Beth, for sharing your knowledge of events with us. And if you have more questions, please, please, please drop in the live chat and ask. Again, we'll have a link of this recorded video. Um, and it'll actually be on our YouTube page. And when we have that up, you can drop it in the chat and just say, hey, do you have the link up? Or you can go directly to our YouTube page to go to Court Reserve or go to YouTube and search Court Reserve, all one word, Court Reserve. Uh, find our channel, click on videos, and this one will be at the top once it's uploaded. Thanks, and I hope you guys have an excellent rest of your Friday.